If calories in match calories out, then it's a little oversimplified to say, but largely your weight will stay roughly the same. I do get it. And it can live up there because it is true, but I don't care. And I have been a calories in, calories out promoter. I know what it's like to put the idea to someone for whom it's a solution and then not be interested. I know the temptation to double down and talk to them about thermodynamics or just patronize them and say, eat less, move more, you lazy f But right now, I don't care. I know what a calorie is. I know what burning calories looks like. I still don't care. Calories in, calories out. It's right, but it's not always great advice. By which I mean, I don't want to give it ongoing significant thought to the extent that people think I should do in order to lose body fat. But I do want to lose body fat. I believe this too. I wouldn't use that as advice for someone wanting to jump off of a building. It's right, but it's not always great advice. My point is not to conflate someone that is overweight and needs help losing some with somebody with sufficient mental health disorders that they would consider self-harm. Although, if you think the former doesn't have significant health implications, you should probably talk to an oncologist or a heart disease expert or a diabetes nurse. My point is that when you want to act in a way that is detrimental to your goals, your well-being, your happiness, knowing the science behind why it is detrimental and what the solution might be does not, for the majority of people, significantly improve the outcome of their situation. Yelling, mate you can't fly the stairs are over there, will not get you onto the crisis management team of your local fire brigade. And my last point of clarification, majority of people, buckle up, it might not include you. You might have it nailed, you might better take nothing but the hard facts and translate that information into motivation that knows no bounds. And you might surround yourself by people that feel the same, you might follow online people with those same abilities. You might be able to look at a tub of Ben and Jerry's, know the calorific content, and that be enough to put it back in the freezer. But you are not the majority. And if you think you are, go outside, look around, you're not. And when you see someone that doesn't have your attributes, the correct assumption should simply be, oh, there's someone different to me. Unfortunately, too often the conclusion that people come to is, they must be the same as me, but more stupid and more lazy they must be if they can't put down a tub of ice cream. I can assure you, as somebody who has spent many, many hours building a business, raising a family, I was not, am not, lazy, and at least average intelligence. But I've had more Ben and Jerry's that I didn't want to eat, but wanted to eat, but didn't want to eat, but ate, than you can possibly comprehend. Okay, why am I discussing all this? Yesterday, I was going to film a video and it never happened. I got very sidetracked, took my iMac back into Apple to get it fixed. They kept me waiting at the Genius Bar for two hours. It threw my day, never happened. But last night, I was going through the footage just to see if there's anything I should keep. And I'd shot an introduction at the pool. And it occurred to me, I'm not far off having a visible six pack. Historically, I haven't cared. In fact, training for next year's Ironman at this stage, it really makes little difference and it allows me to eat in a slightly more relaxed way. And ultimately, this channel is about saying to people, you might be able to improve slightly on where you are, maybe even get above average and either is very cool. Having a visible six pack is of no additional credibility in my role putting across that message. Shock and horror, despite what you might think from social media, having a visible six pack is above, above average. But it's my 47th birthday in exactly eight weeks time and I thought it might be quite a nice present to myself to have, even for a short period of time, visible six pack. I've also got the weekend before a Spartan race and running those shirtless is quite the uh, Spartan warrior-esque thing to do. And the following weekend, I've got a 50 kilometer ultra marathon and I know that running that at 210 pounds weight will be more comfortable than running it at 220 pounds weight. So I thought, what the hell, let's have a go. Now in the past, my immediate reaction would have been to fire up my fitness pal and work out exactly where I can find the 450 to 500 calories a day deficit to achieve that objective. 
when I went from way over 300 pounds and lost about 100 pounds, I did it counting calories and running. I get that it works. This is me after, after I lost all that weight. And come with me. That is me just 12 months later, hardly any exercise and certainly no calorie counting. So I'm gonna do what I did then for the next eight weeks. Calories in, calories out, that's a concept that will obviously exist in my world, but it's gonna be as relevant to me day to day as the fact that there is oxygen in the air when I go running. Because when I eat too many calories, it's not because of a miscalculation of my in-out allowance. It's not because I misjudged one of my macronutrients or misread the label on my whey protein isolate. It's because I was tempted and or found myself in a situation that I associated subconsciously with eating badly and or lacked accountability. Probably all three. I need to fix that. I don't need to download another metabolic rate calculator. Temptation. I've mentioned Ben and Jerry's. It's very hard to explain to somebody unaffected by the irrational desire for junk food how strong that impulse can be. It doesn't understand rational debate and common sense. It doesn't care about science. It just wants. I really hesitate to compare overeating addiction with alcohol addiction because I don't know enough about the true brain chemistry to say whether they are really comparable but I know alcoholics and I've seen them seek out their want when it has been obviously a detrimental thing for them to do. And I myself have been sat in a drive through at McDonald's telling myself, just drive through, don't buy anything, just drive through, don't buy anything, just drive through, three large Big Mac meals and a McFlurry, please. What the f If you don't know somebody with an addiction and you don't work in a drive through handing out burgers to people mumbling mantras of self-loathing to themselves, here is a perfect example of irrational addiction, the best you might ever see. There is an amazing Denzel Washington movie. King Kong ain't got shit on me! Not that one. The plane goes upside down. Not that one either. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to know the outcome to a pivotal scene in this film, turn off the volume till the hat comes off. In the movie flight, Denzel is a pilot, a hero pilot, whose heroism saves the lives of hundreds of people during a crash that was outside of his control. But he is a drunk and was drunk at the time. And if that were discovered, he's going to prison rather than being celebrated for saving those lives. On the night before he is due to testify at an inquiry into the crash, his friends stash him away in a hotel room and remove all the alcohol. All he has to do is get up the following morning, go to the inquiry, not mention he was drunk, not be drunk, and he is a hero, not a villain. During the night, he notices that the door to the adjoining hotel room has been left open by the cleaners, and he wanders into that room, it's empty. But the mini bar is full, and he reaches in, he takes out a bottle, and everyone watching the film is screaming to themselves, just put the bottle down. You will go to prison if you drink that, because if you drink that, you will drink all of it. And he puts the bottle on top of the minibar and walks away. And everybody that does not know an addict thinks, thank goodness, obviously he wasn't going to drink it. That would be nuts. And everybody that knows an addict is completely unsurprised when this happens. Oh, and he goes to jail. He is not stupid, he is not lazy, and he probably doesn't need to know the science behind the addictive qualities of the alcohol he's drinking. What he needed was no temptation. How does that relate to me? It's hard, and when I've used the alcohol example before, people have said, well, hang on a minute, that's a much more severe addiction with a much more severe solution, total sobriety, you can't compare them. True, but one of the issues with food addiction is that you cannot have total sobriety from food. You need to eat something. So here in the house, I remove what I can. There is no junk food here. There are no sweets, there's no desserts, no puddings. The only snacks we have are at the weekend and then it's the kids get to pick one each for themselves. There is no family supply of junk food because 
it would not remain a family supply for very long. And outside the house, I just have to think and I have to plan and people think that sounds a bit excessive, but it works and I'll show you why. Let's go to Apple. So Apple have fixed the iMac screen in under 24 hours. Good stuff, Apple. The distance between my driveway here and the Genius Bar there, less than 10 minutes journey time but it goes past stores that I have a far too familiar acquaintance with. So I've already had a good meal here before I set off. I'm now not hungry. I've got a workout planned in the gym here when I get home, so I have a motivation to not eat badly while I'm out. Some people think just to pop out to the shops, that sounds like a lot of excessive work. It is, but if I don't do it, it doesn't go well. So temptation is hard. Find it, eliminate it, avoid it. Negative associations. Once you spot a negative association, they're pretty easy to break, but man, they can be sneaky. It took me an awful long time to realize that I was finding it almost impossible to watch TV late in the evening without something edible in my hands. I solved it very straightforward by bringing TV hour forward to just after our evening meal, when I'm already full up and not hungry, and then later in the evening, I would allocate time to do something else maybe putting a video together or doing some work on the bikes. Something that didn't have that association with eating while I'm doing it. And there are others, you just have to look for them and become aware of them. The most recent one for me that I've realized I need to get on top of is my post-race celebratory treat meal. The biggest damage I did to myself yesterday, getting home and having a gigantic Domino's stuffed crust cheeseburger topping pizza that was just, I mean, it was amazing, but it was probably suboptimal nutritionally. I've got into a very bad habit of associating doing an event, the training for an event beforehand, somehow adding up to an allowance for junk food, and it has to stop. I've got about 15 races between now and the end of the year. I can't have 15 junk food days. That association has to be broken. Actually, this weekend, I've got a race, and in the evening, we've already booked to go to a restaurant for a meal. And you might think, well, going to a restaurant, is that any better? It is. It breaks that link between done the event, eat complete junk. I will go to the restaurant and order something good and healthy and nice for me, and it breaks that association. And accountability. When you are required or expected to justify actions or decisions. It is not possible to justify the decision of having a Burger King for breakfast daily. But if no one is asking for that justification, who cares? You need to find something, someone, that you are accountable to. A large part of why I have this channel. It allows me to find accountability through the subscribers. But accountability has something of an enemy with acceptability nowadays. When I was a massively overweight adult, I was an adult. Therefore, no one should be telling me what to do, within reason. There is an argument that says that if everybody in society is unhealthy, the negative implications are spread to all, but let's not overcomplicate matters. I'm a grown up, stay out of my face. But once I asked for help and explained what I wanted to do and looked for support, more often than not, I found excessive acceptance. People would say to me, oh, you're not that fat, you don't look that big, you don't really need to lose that much weight, don't forget you're quite tall. Oh thanks, because I'd forgotten. It wasn't helpful at all. In the end I had to sort of invent accountability by telling myself that my kids thought I looked grim whether or not they did is largely irrelevant. It worked and I managed to lose weight. So the point is to make yourself accountable to people that will understand and perhaps even share your goals. Actually, social media is a good one for this. You can go onto Facebook and join your local running group and tell them how you want to get your park run time down or put your bicycle rides on Instagram and have people become interested in that. Once you start sharing your objectives and your goals, accountability tends to follow. Whether you share it with a small number of people whose opinion you care about deeply or a large number of people that you don't even know. Having people that you don't want to disappoint is valuable. Remember that picture? I was in a new relationship and it solved all three problems. Temptation, my temptation centers in the brain were overloaded by her. I didn't need to worry about burgers. Negative associations, I didn't have any. My life was in a state of upheaval and change. None had been built up. Accountability, easy. I was accountable to her. I still am, I just married her. But be careful, 
being accountable to the same person for all of your requirements long term is not necessarily fair. That's your wife or your husband or your friend. It's certainly not your mum. You're not seven years old. I'd argue that it's not really healthy to anchor yourself to just one person for all of your I do it for you motivation. Hence my suggestion to try and find accountability through other areas as well. And that is why calories in, calories out, which I do believe in. And that is why calories in, calories out, which I believe is true, is not going to be the primary thought process that goes through my head when I'm trying to work out how do I get a six pack. And almost lastly, if you're thinking, hang on a minute, what does this guy know about my situation? He needs to lose a couple of pounds to get abs. I need to lose a couple of hundred pounds to improve my quality of life. Okay, well, first of all, A, I have been there. I understand. I was massively overweight and massively unhealthy. And B, what are you doing? Are we not on the same side? Look, if you want to adopt a lifestyle that means come Friday you have a bit less body fat than you had on Monday, then you need to adhere to some basic principles. Adopt some simple strategies that will be consistent whether you want to lose one pound or a hundred pounds. And I can guarantee you the issues that got me to being as overweight as I once was, temptation, negative associations, poor accountability, they are as relevant to me today as they were then. And lastly, lastly, if you're thinking this is all nonsense and my advice is not perfect and my examples and analogies are not 100% accurate, why is he not telling people that even if they nail the temptations, the associations, the accountability, it still all comes down to calories in, calories out. You need to understand that perfect advice that is not followed is useless. Better good advice that is. So if you are continually, repeatedly, over and over pushing a message that no matter how accurate it might be, isn't being listened to, and go look around outside again, it's not, then is the lazy stupid person really the one chugging through the Ben and Jerry's I hope you find this useful, I hope you like it, I hope you subscribe and come back in eight weeks and if I don't have a six pack, hold me accountable, jump in the comments and say, dude, what the f***?